possible revelation from investigators. The flames ripping through this historic black church last night, bringing federal investigators to rural South Carolina, looking into whether nature or hatred could be to blame. Law enforcement sources telling ABC News that for now it appears the fire was not deliberately set and may have been caused by lightning. We haven't ruled anything in or anything out at this point. Mount Zion AME Church in Greeleyville is now the seventh black church to burn since the deadly shooting at Charleston's Emanuel AME Church two weeks ago. Weather and election. Electrical problems, factors for some of the fires, but not all. After this church on Briar Creek Road, right before Central, it's on fire. That church fire in Charlotte, North Carolina, ruled in arson. Just seeing the flames just up in the air, that had me terrified. The same here in Macon, Georgia. If someone said this, you know, we want to find him. Back at Mount Zion, parishioners praying through the night this was not a repeat of history. Brought back all those old memories. The church burned to the ground 20 years ago by two members of the Ku Klux Klan. I will do everything I can to prosecute those responsible. President Bill Clinton there a year later when it was rebuilt. That very building now gone too. We were resilient then. We will be resilient now. And investigators say it could be at least a week before they know what caused this fire. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC 7 News. Well, this noon, more on Hillary Clinton's emails now on the public record. That includes some 3,000 pages of once private emails that she sent as Secretary of State. Most of them are routine, but one key revelation, the White House apparently knew that Clinton had a special non-government email account. Top administration staffers couldn't track down Clinton's email in the government directory and had to ask her staff to provide it. As many as 55,000 total pages will be released every month until right up before the Iowa caucuses. And this just coming in late this morning, we've learned Macy's has cut ties with Donald Trump. More than 700,000 people signed a petition on MoveOn.org urging the retailer to end its relationship with the now Republican presidential candidate. It comes after he referred to Mexican immigrants as, quote, killers and rapists in his campaign announcement. Macy says it will phase out Trump's products. Univision and NBC have already announced that they will not air the Miss USA or Miss Universe pageants and NBA. C says that Trump's reality show, The Apprentice, will continue on without him. Fire crews are making gains on that wildfire raging out in Washington state. Crews say that they are making progress in the town of Winnehatchee. Uh, the fast moving fire has already burned more than four square miles and destroyed two dozen homes and businesses. Officials are now warning about more hot and dry weather for the 4th of July holiday, which could only make the situation worse. A North Carolina father attacked by a shark over the weekend is now speaking out about it. 47-year-old Patrick Thornton explained exclusively to ABC News how he fought off the shark. The incident happened Friday while he was on vacation with his 8-year-old son, niece, and nephew. He was swimming in the shallow waters of Avon Beach on the Outer Banks when he felt a tug at his foot. It took a big, pretty big chunk out of my right leg, so I started punching the shark, and then it grabbed the, my back. Must have bit me in the back. Oh my goodness! Thornton said his niece and nephew made it to shore, but he had to go back in the water for his son, who was paralyzed with fear. His son was not hurt, and Thornton was rushed to the hospital, and he is now recovering at home. Wow! I had to, I had to punch the shark to get him off of me. Sometimes that's what you got to do. You know, survival. Oof. You know, do what you have to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, were you Wild were you us. awakened or already awakened? Time for the uh, Good I Morning was Washington. I was <laughs> awakened by uh, yeah, the, the light show that Mother Nature put on. It was one of the wilder storms I've seen uh, where yeah. I live in Southern Maryland. So unbelievable. Uh, today a much quieter day and maybe an isolated Good. shower rumble storm with a cold front later, but things are going to settle down on us. 81 right now at Reagan National Airport. Some sunshine and haze in the sky. 83 degrees in Fredericksburg. 80 right now at Reagan National Airport. A very quiet midday on this Wednesday, but later this afternoon. We're looking for highs about 87, partly cloudy again. Just a stray storm with this front coming through the area. Area temperatures are in the 70s to the north, even some 60s across New England. Lower 80s to the south, low 70s back to the west. I think we will see kind of on average over the next week or so, average normal temperatures for early July, which is good. No big spikes or heat waves. I mean, they've got a heat wave now in France. It is red on line. It's like already uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon in Paris and most of the airports there 
or 100 degrees or higher. We've got the blazing heat in San Francisco, the all kinds of wild stuff. So we put up with an occasional thunderstorm here, and it looks like that could be the case again this afternoon with this minor front. But most of the energy well displaced away to the north, uh, across New England with the rain, and also over the Tennessee Valley with a big cluster of storms moving through southeastern sections of Missouri and into western sections of Kentucky and uh, Tennessee right now. So we're going to see this front make a move the next couple days. The problem is in the summertime, it's very hard to get a cold front to move all the way through and totally out of the picture. What often happens and likely to happen again is the front will come through and pretty much get tired and sleepy and say, eh, I don't want to go any more farther to the south and east, and it stops. And with the position to our south, that means every little ripple of energy in the atmosphere that develops along the front will set the stage for occasional showers and thunderstorms, and that's our forecast tomorrow and Friday and even into the holiday weekend. A little uh, glimpse at our future cast. 3 o'clock this afternoon, this model indicates a little line of showers, maybe a rumble of thunder coming across the I-95 corridor. Things calm down tonight. And then tomorrow, with the front to the south, looks like enough energy brings some more areas of rain through the morning. Could be here for the rush hour in the midday and a couple scattered showers uh, through the afternoon and early evening as well. And then we will indeed uh, look ahead for you coming up in just a moment. But for tomorrow, specifically 85 with a better chance of afternoon showers and thunderstorms and some morning rain showers around the area. And then looking to the holiday Friday and the 4th on Saturday and Sunday will be in the low to mid 80s most of the time. Scattered showers and thunderstorms Friday could be a few on Saturday and Sunday afternoons as well. Fingers crossed that most of the storms will be coming in the Friday time span and anything Saturday afternoon will clear out in, in time for the fireworks. And that looks like a good bet. Temperatures falling through the 70s. Now, if you go to the beaches, looks like a pretty good weekend. Can't rule out a Saturday shower storm at the beaches, but generally it looks pretty good. Kind of a typical July weekend. The thing that is absent here so far this summer is any sort of heat wave. And uh, I'm fine if it I, doesn't okay happen. I'm with that. If you're yeah. good with it, I'm good with <laughs> it. It works for me. <laughs> All right. Glad I'm on the same page there. All right. Doug, thank you. Okay. Coming up here on ABC. 7 News at noon, raising the minimum wage where employees will be making more money. And grab your cell phone. The policy change announced today for White House tours. We'll be right back. Not <laughs> the play of the day is brought to you by Eastern's Automotive Group. A friend of mine, he say, I need a car. I tell him, go to Eastern's.com, baby. They got a crazy huge selection. Always a thousand choices in stock. That's why they're the biggest and the best and sell the most cars in the Virginia, Maryland, D.C. area. And so my friend, he takes my advice, gets a deal from Easton's, and now he got a big smile. Now go to Easton's.com, baby, and be smart. Why are we watching this again? I pay for all these channels, so I make myself watch them all. Joey, I'll watch anything except this. Except this. Go back. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Files Custom TV lets you pay for the types of channels you want, not the ones you don't. 100% fiber optics is here. Get out of the past. Get Fios. Now for $79.99 a month. Go online or call. When I was 45, I was embarrassed by my legs. Now I'm 50, and my legs look great. It's like my legs are aging backwards. What's my secret? Thanks to Vein Clinics of America, my legs look and feel great again. From the first time you walk in, they make you feel comfortable. That's why thousands of women just like you stopped hiding their legs and made the call to Vein Clinics of America. All of these women discovered how to get healthier, stronger, sexier legs at Vein Clinics of America. Spider and varicose veins can be embarrassing, uncomfortable, and painful. Left untreated, they can get worse. Varicose vein disease tends to be progressive in nature, and it tends to get worse over the years. So it's better to treat it when you force them to can your legs really go back in time? Mine did. Find out how when you visit veinclinics.com. And I'm happy that she likes the way her legs look and the way they feel. They're more vibrant. They feel better. They're more alive. My legs are sexy again, and I'm proud of them. Thanks to Vein Clinics of America. Now it's your turn. Non-stop local news, live on News Channel 8, the day's top local stories, plus up-to-the-minute weather. News Channel 8, non-stop live local news. 
A Maryland man is speaking out against the company that operates the express lanes in Virginia, just as the busy 4th of July travel weekend is about to get started. Kevin Stanfield says his car's easy pass was linked to his wife's lost credit card, which they canceled. But when they didn't notify easy pass with the new credit card info and kept using the express lanes, they got a bill from Transurban for more than $10,000. His wife is now a plaintiff in the class action lawsuit against Transurban. This is highway robbery. I made an honest mistake and it ended up costing me $2,200. It's crazy. What we're looking at today, how we can educate folks moving forward so they can avoid those fees entirely. Well, Transurban says that they gave Stanfield the opportunity to reduce his administrative fees several times. Stanfield, as you heard him say there, eventually settled for $2,200 and he is now suing to get that money back. Today, some people working in Maryland and D.C. are getting a pay raise. The minimum wage in D.C. and Maryland is going up. In the district, it now sits at $10.50 an hour. That is up a dollar from last July. And next July, it will ri rise by one more dollar to $11.50. The minimum wage is also going up in Maryland by a quarter. It's increasing from $8 to $8.25. Well, the White House now saying visitors can take photos or use social media during public tours of the building. The long-standing ban ended today. Well, that announcement came from anymore. First Lady Michelle Obama here in a video posted on her Instagram account. She's seen <laughs> ripping in half a sign that's been displayed during tour hours and says no photos or social media allowed. Well, clear and warm right now, but a slight change of chance of rain later on today. Doug is back with a final look at your forecast next. I've always seen No-No on TV, and I always wondered if it worked. And it's definitely, I can see what everybody talks about now. It's not a razor. It's not a laser. It's No-No from Radiancy.